And who am I? That's not a secret I'll never tell. You know you love me. XOXO. Gossip Girl. What's up? We got Gossip Girl. Season 2, Episode 16. You've got Yale. This episode starts off with at the, at the Waldorf. Blair comes down to find Harold and Ramon waiting for her to celebrate Yale Day. The day where she hopefully receives an early access acceptance to Yale. They surprise her with a breakfast consisting of blue foods and a bulldog, which they name Handsome Dan. Blair decides to, yeah, she to d decides to drop the Dan name and just call him Handsome. Of course, yeah, literally. Why would you be? Why would she want to be reminded of a guy of a dog named Handsome Dan? Yeah, and she knows Dan Humphrey, and she absolutely does not like him. So of course she would not want to have her dog be named Handsome Dan. So she just calls him Handsome, which. She decides to keep the dog, but change, but drop the Dan name and just call him Handsome. Well, Ramon reminds her that this is his final appearance off Jack. But I think this is the final appearance of Ramon, but not Harold. Harold continues to make appearances on the show after this. But I think this is the last, second to last appearance of Ramon. And, and Ramon reminds her that the opera is at night and they'll be celebrating there with champagne. She asks if Chucks will be joining Harold asks if Chuck will be joining him, but Blair doesn't know because Chuck is dead to her. Of course, I get it because last episode she caught him with those women. He tried to say that it was Jack's fault, but she only accused him. But of course, it was Jack's fault. So, yeah. At the Vander Woods, and Dan brings Serena coffee before school to come around, right? Yale Day. Dan worries that he won't be accepted, while Serena wonders what will happen if she gets accepted and Blair doesn't. She decides that everything will be fine, even though the whole, even, even though the whole son thing, the whole, the whole Andrew thing, kind, the whole their son Andrew being dead thing, even though he's not, even though that's not their son, but still they believe that's their son and that he's dead. That the whole son's thing has brought the whole having a son the whole having Rufus having a son thing has brought has brought Lily and Rufus closer together. Dan agrees, but mentions that's good that the, but she mentioned so that's good that their parents are keeping their relationship on the down low. However, as she's saying that, Rufus and Lily comes downstairs after spending the night together. Lily says that now that the awkward run is over awkward running is over, they can stop thinking around. Dan and Serena are leave for school. Lily takes the opportunity to invite Rufus to the opera that night. He tries to get out of it since he's not a fan of opera, but Lily convinces him to go anyway as they can make their official debut as a couple. But yeah, it's kind of weird that Lily, like, Lily, Bart died in episode 13 and Lily doesn't even wait to get back with Rufus. It's kind of weird. It's kind of sus, sus that she's not, like, I I mentioned in the last bit with episode fourteen that Serena that with episode fourteen's video that Serena didn't take enough time to get over Aaron before going to Dan getting back with Dan. But this should be here too. Like Lily doesn't even mourn Bart's death. She just she just gets it. She just she just gets back out of Rufus without any Without any trying to like stop it, trying to, but I guess they're. Ha I'm happy they're together. At the palace, Chuck tries to come up with a new plan, new way to get Chuck that get Jack axed from Bart Industry from Bass Industry. I said Bart Bass Industry. Jack arrives and asks him if he's going to the opera that night since the entire Bass board is going, and he's still the public face of the company. He also mentions that their stock might dip since Chuck. Since he's still learning the job. Chuck is unamused and tells him that he doesn't know what he's doing. Chuck reminds him that it's it's his company and leaves the suite. At the con at the con at consent, Serena introduces Dan to her Shakespeare teacher, Rachel Carr. Who is a show exclusive character and has nothing to do with the novel. There are, yeah, there are some characters in the show that just are there of this show's creation, 
just like Rachel Carr and some other characters. Serena explains that Rachel explains that she's from Desmonis, Iowa. I hopefully that's a real place, and hopefully I'm not butchering it. Probably it's not a real place because if it is a real place, how could it be so hard to to say out loud? So it's probably a real place, and I'm just butchering the title. Sorry, Demonis, Iowa. I'm sorry for butchering your name so badly in this re in this review. I don't know if you're a real place, if the show faked it, if the show made it up. I thought Modesto from Supernatural was not real. Also, get, I'll be getting back to the Supernatural reviews probably after I do this series, because I... After I do the series, because I want to do that after Thurman's, but then I got into this, so, but still. Don't know when I'll be getting back to Thurman's either. So, anyway, and that New York is very different from there. Serena tells her that the Palace Hotel lobby is really nice and quiet. Well, Dan, well, Dan suggests Rufus is our gallery in Brooklyn. Outs outside, Blair has her minions consistently refresh her email while looking for the acceptance one from Yale. Acceptance from Yale. She notes that Nellie isn't doing as she told. Nellie explains that she's waiting for her acceptance as well. Blair orders Blair orders her to go back and refresh the party as they head into school. Inside, Nate asks Dan if he's going to the opera. Dan says Serena is taking him, and Nate confesses that he wants to invite Vanessa to sit in his family box with him. Dan Dan encourages him to do it so and they talk. As to do so, to do it, and they talk. As they talk, his phone rings with a new email. Back at back at the Vanderwoods, and Lily's in the middle of choosing a gown for the opera, but is interrupted by Chuck's arrival. He asks her for help in a scheme, and she decides to tear him out. Back at Constance, Serena sees Blair's minions refreshing her email, and she asks what they're doing. Blair tells her not to distract them, and their phones then go off with a new email. So does Serena. Serena reads that she was accepted. That Serena was accepted. Meanwhile, Blair says the font on her phone is too small and she needs to check it on her real computer. Nellie snatches her phone away and and reads that Blair. It says that Blair is waitlisted and and bold. Dan then runs outside and excitedly tells Serena that he was accepted. Seeing Blair's crushed face, Serena lies and says that uh, she was waitlisted too. Dan assures her that she'll be accepted in the spring. So she shouldn't worry. Then Blair yells at her minions to get her a meeting with Headmistress Quella right away. At the Vanderwoodsons, Chuck explains to Lily that he has been unsuccessful in getting Jack out of, Jack out of the out, and he's worried Bart's legacy will be ruined because Jack is inexperienced. Lily rep replies that her concerns is for Chuck and not for Bass Industries. Yeah, she asks him if he's going, if he's considering moving back in, but he's an inter but he is not interested in that. And asks if she's willing to help help her know. She agrees to talk to the board and ask what she can do, but but only if Chuck agrees to stop black following Jack with bad tents to get him out. They make plan they make plans to meet back up at two that afternoon. Back at Constance, Headmistress Cluller, now played now now played by Jan Maxwell instead of Linda Edmond. Don't know why they replaced the actress halfway through the show. That is just so weird. That's just so weird. <laughs> like literally. They ha they re they she's played by the late the late Jan Maxwell. I should probably for I forgot to say that that Jan Maxwell passed away years ago. But still, the fact is that in the own show they recast the actress halfway through is very weird. Like in other shows, the reason why they have like the actress has a problem or there's some or she doesn't like with Jesus and the Fosters. That made sense because it wasn't halfway through his own season. It was at the end of the season why he was gone. But this, this is halfway through. She's just mysteriously replaced by a new woman and looks completely different than her previous appearance. And now has longer hair. And it's very weird that they just are like, oh, this is the same character. She just looks and acts different and acts nothing like the previous char characterization of, of, of Head Mistress of Head Mistress Queller. Yeah, again. So Blair tell so Head Mistress Queller, played by the late great played by the late great Jam Max. Head Mistress Queller, played by the late great Jam Maxwell, tells Blair Again, 
Don't know why they got rid of Lisa and Melanie. But now she's played by Jan Mac, the late great Jan Maxwell. Tells Blair that when she spoke with Dan Barraby that morning, he told her that if the students they accepted clients, she would give the open spot. Blair assumes it's Dan and Quiller says that Dan will never pass and tells Quiller that Dan will never accept will never pass up his acceptance. Quiller tells her that she is that she wasn't speaking about Dan and she's most likely gonna get in, so all she has to do is keep her perfect transcript. She then shows Blair out of her office and leaves. Again, why did we cast her out of the blue? It was very weird, but it was really weird that this that Jan Maxwell just randomly comes into the show, and now we have to act like, oh, this is how Mrs. Queller now. She just looks different and has a new face, but this is the same character that she's always been. We just have to act like that because it's a show. We can't, but. But again, I wonder why Lisa Edmond left the role. I don't know. Why did Lisa leave the role? Why did, or is it Linda? I think it's Linda. Why did Linda leave the role of Queller? We'll never know. She just randomly gets replaced halfway through the season with a whole new actress. I wanted to bring stuff. I could have just said her, the actress's name and then moved on. But I wanted to bring this up. Because it's very weird that they just randomly rep But anyway, yeah, so elsewhere, Serena confines in her about uh, her Shakespeare teacher, Rachel, about her acceptance. Rachel advises her not to, to choose that choosing that college is her personal decision and it's important to make the right one. Serena misses, she's not sure she wants to go to Yale because her interest was stemmed by other people, not, her, not herself. Blair comes up and tells Serena she thinks Nellie is the one constant who was accepted. Richard tells her to take the opportunity to give Blair a great takes the opportunity to give Blair a great essay back and excuse herself. When she's gone, Blair mentions Serena that she's surprised Yale passed up accepting her for plus for the publicity. Serena for passed up mentioned that Serena that she's why Yale passed up accepting Serena for the publicity. Serena num mumbles that that they don't want her to be, they don't want, they don't want her for, for Blair, like Blair said. And Blair replies that Dan's probably mad. She glances at the essay and Rachel hands her and then tells Serena she has to go. On, on the phone, Serena phones rings and she finds Shirley, Dean Barabee's receptionist on the other end. She asks Serena if the school can issue a press release that she'll be attending in the fall, but Serena says she'll have to call back before hanging out. Again, so at past injuries, Lily meets with Pete Holmberg, who gets swift, who is the lawyer here, but he's the business manager in a later episode. It's very weird that they switch this guy's title halfway through the show. Who tells her that they wish she had left at been left at town, but that Chuck left them no choice but to give Jack the job. Peter also reminds her that Bart. Peter also reminds her that Bart will clearly say that Chuck Leo Guardian is to be left in control, and all they can do is try to temper Jack's action. Then Jack enters the room, and Pete leaves. He tries. Jack tries to hit on Lily because this dude is a this dude is a pervert and a predator. And he's first he's first trying to hit on the eighteen year old Blair and now he's trying to hit on Lily. This dude is off I guess we to show that he's a good villain, that he's being a terrible person. But still. But she in a sense hands him a handkerchief for his notes, which res residues from which has cocaine residue. After he takes it, he tells her that the board won't dare get rid of him because he's preferable over a woman with her reputation. And he, and she of course leaves. And this is what probably makes her now, this probably now makes her realize that yeah, Chuck was right. This dude is a terrible person and he needs to be taken down. Back at Constance, Blair confronts Rachel for giving her a B on her essay. Yep, B got a B. I know that's a good ref line that Blair, Blair, Queen B Blair got a B, but still, she 
She also explained the second semester seniors get a free pass so that students can get into the best colleges. Rachel says maybe she'll get in trouble for not in front grades, but until she that until then she'll grade like she always had. Blair pleads with her, saying that she has to keep her GPA perfect so she can get into Yale. But Rachel is unmoved and walks away. Blair, well, Blair goes to Serena and tearfully and tells her that she just lost Yale. Serena asks for a moment alone so, so she can return a phone call. Back back at the Vanderwoods, and Lily tells Chuck that she's ready to play dirty, and he gives her a list of ideas on how to jack down, but he insists on doing something that's not illegal. While they talk, she receives a call from Rufus, but hangs up on him. Chuck says he can't believe she's going out with Rufus soon, soon after Bart's death. He tells her that she should have some tact and respect for her dead husband, but she, but he's not surprised because because she thinks her, of herself first. Then he leaves the apartment. Yes, Chuck, I agree with you here. Lily getting into a relationship so early after Bart's death is kind of wrong and, and inconsiderate of her to do. I agree with Chuck 100% now. Like, I agree with Chuck on this. This is just like, if he would have said this to Serena, would have made sense. Back back at back at Conson, Blair, Penelope, Hazel, and Iz plan, a plan to humiliate Rachel in exchange for giving their queen B a B on her essay. Dan comes out to Serena and suggests they go to Yale for the weekend, maybe to get her excited about going there. Serena notices the girls and goes over to tell them she knows what they're, they're up to no good. Blair doesn't deny it and says that she can't risk not getting into Yale. Serena explains to Blair that, that Serena did get into Yale, but she denied her acceptance. Shocked, Dan notes that, he, that she did get in, but then why, asks why she turned it down. He asks her if she wants to go there. She confesses that she doesn't, and he leaves and asks her not to follow him. Serena asks Blair if she's, going, if she's still going after Rachel, but she says no. Elsewhere, Nate and Vanessa take a walk about and about inviting her to go to opera with him. She interrupts and says that she brought him nosebleed seats to the opera. Seeing how proud, seeing how proud she is of having brought bought tickets, though, so Nate doesn't say anything about the box seats and accepts her invitation to go. After all, Eric tries to show Rufus how to behave at the opera like and act like he knows what he's talking about. Jenny tells Rufus that Lily loves him because he isn't one of those guys who pretends. And Rufus admits that he he does he just wants to do right by her. Eric continues with his lesson. At the Waldorf, Blair has Penelope and Iz give her pros and cons on whether she should mess with Rachel. She decides that she should and calls her. Rachel's surprised to hear, even the, again, Serena, why do you trust Blair? Like, literally, she says she's not going to do something. And then, and then her friends say, oh, Blair, you should do it. And Blair doesn't consider think about, oh, I just told Serena I shouldn't do it. But whatever, her minion says she should do it, so she does it anyway. It's Blair. I'm surprised that Serena literally, literally, literally took that. For literally took, literally actually believed Blair was not going to do anything. Rachel is surprised to hear from Blair, and Blair apologized for how she behaved that day and invites Rachel to have dinner with her and her family the night before they all attend the opera. Rachel is skeptical at first, finally decides to go. Blair is pleased, and they make plans to meet at the restaurant that night. When they hang out, Blair Penelope is laugh menacingly at what just happened. At at the opera, Rufus and Lily talk to Dan and Serena about potential road trips to visit them at Yale and Brown. Respectfully, however, Dan and Serena are interested in conversation. Dan excuses himself, but meanwhile, Nate and Vanessa arrive at the theater. They run to Dan, who tells them about the conversation he's had with Rufus and Lily. Dan mentions the box seat to a Nate quickly stops and says that they're third tier. Vanessa asks what's going on, and Nate admits that there wants to. There might be some others available for them. However, elsewhere, Rufus and Lily are photographed before running into Jack and his date, Pauletta, a rep from Bass Industries who is there to keep an eye on him. Jack tells them to ponder what, what, why they thought going together was a good idea and walks away. Pauletta tells them to join the show and follows close behind Jack. 
After they reach the top, Rufus runs into Bass family lawyer Bruce Kaplan, who I think is the guy who gets turned into the business manager later, but I could be wrong. He asks Lily, he asks Lily what she wants him to do about this particular set of documents, and she realizes the solution to the Jack problem is very simple. She asks two men to wait and talk while she finds Chuck. She does and says, while she finds Chuck, she does and says she found a solution. She will share with him if he meets her back, meets her back in 15 minutes. Meanwhile, Vanessa and Nate sit in their seats. Nate makes jokes about how far up they are, but Vanessa defensively says that the show will probably be great from up there. After a minute, two elderly ladies sit down next to him and begin coughing loudly and excessively. Back, back downstairs, Dan finds Serena staying alone. He admits that he's not mad that she's not going to the same school as him, but that she lied for so long about wanting to go there. She explains that she didn't fi figure it out until the day that and that Brown will be is a really better fit for her. They discuss the future of their relationship with Rufus and Lily, also having a relationship, and decide the best option is just to let it happen on its own. And they agree, and they agree that their parents' relationship is probably won't la probably won't last. And they walk off together, hand in hand. Rufus tells Lily that he studied the wrong opera and hopes of impressing her and her friends, but she thinks it's sweet to, of him to try. They kiss, which Dan and Serena walk in on. They excuse themselves to go find their seats, and Lily asks Rufus to go with them while she goes to see Chuck. Elsewhere, Blair goes to goes to her seat with Harold Lamont. On her way, she sees a call from Jen Maxwell's headmistress caller, who informs her that she's. She, that she spoke with Rachel about the grade, and she made sure Blair went in the course with an A. Blair, realizing that she messed up when she chose to mess with Rachel, thanks the headmistress for, headmistress for calling her. When she hangs up, she tells Harold that she has to go and fix something before she can enjoy the show. She leaves the theater, unknowingly running past Chuck, who is this, who is ex waiting for Lily. Afterwards, Lily comes over to Chuck with the capital, who who he, he explains that before Bark died, he was in the middle of legally adopting Serena and Eric while Lily was about was about to legally adopt Chuck. She he had that Lily had papers faxed to a box off to to the box office and if Chuck signs him, Lily becomes Lily becomes his illegal guardian and none who had bass injuries. Chuck immediately signs them, which Jack comes over once he's done. He says that Jack can't sign anything without his consent, but Jack coo coolly replies that he just lo Jack he just lost Jack the company. Coolly. In in the Central Park, Lily goes to find Rachel. She finds her on her way out. And Rachel reveals that that she knew Blair sent sent her to a closed restaurant and lied about it at a certain time. Blair explains that she was just trying to teach her a lesson, but Rachel says not the way it works. That's not the way it works, and it's supposed to be the other way around. Blair admits that she's trying, still growing up, and she can't act out, and she can't act, and she cannot not act out against people. She offers to find, help Rachel find tickets, but Rachel says she'll see her Monday. Blair Blair gets into a car and leaves, but once she's gone, Rachel calls headmistress Queller. Oh wait, no, I should say John Maxwell. Head Mistress Queller. I have to say that now because I don't want to confuse the two actresses. Back at back at the, this is what happens when you recast a character. I don't want to confuse the two actresses who play her. Back at the opera, Dan and Nate flat, move into his box seat, move into his box seats, and they begin doing stuff in privacy. Meanwhile, Lily goes to a restroom to apply her lipstick, but is followed by Jack, who locks the door. Lily informs them that the adoption is part one. Or one, but Jack doesn't doesn't listen, and Lily tells him that he's high and isn't thinking about the repercussions of what he's doing. She has to leave, but he blocks her blocks her way. Outside, the show lets lets out for intermission. Dan well, Rufus asks Dan if she's seen Lily, but he hasn't. He goes to ask Chuck, who says that Lily was going to to the to pow, to the powder room. But upon noticing the line of women building up inside the restroom, he realizes she said that a while ago. He goes over to try and open the door, but notices it's locked. A woman in the front line asks what she's doing, and he asks why it's locked. She shrugs, and he walks away. Inside the restroom, Jack tries to grab grab Lily forcefully and yells that she can't force him out of his, out of his job. She kisses him roughly and, try, and tries to 
tries he tries to force himself onto her. He tries to rape her and force himself onto her. She screams for help just as Chuck and the security guard break into the room. They grab Jack and and Chuck tra takes the opportunity to punch him in the face. You go, Chuck. Rufus goes to Lily, who tearfully thanks Chuck for saving her. The next day, Rufus and Lily review their photos in the newspaper and laugh about it. He asks if she's sure she's okay, and she says she is. Chuck then arrives, and Rufus decides to leave, but shakes Chuck's hand on the way out. Lily, Lily tells Chuck that Jack is on his way back to Australia, and she didn't press charges because she wanted him gone. Just because just she want, she just wanted him him gone. He tells her that on his 18th birthday, she's going to give him the company back, just like Bart wanted. But she wants him to be a part of their family. Chuck and Miss A knows what happened to his father was an accident, and he wants to move back in. She says she would love that, and they make up. At the Waldorf, Blair talks talks on the phone with Serena while she gets ready to meet head of Jay and Maxwell, headmistress Queller at concert. They make plans to meet up afterwards and once they hang up, Serena stares at a photo of her and Dan from Cotillion from the High Society episode and calls him. Kind of. From season one, episode ten, High Society, and calls him. At gallery, Dan t calls her, sees her calling, but ignores the call. Right after, Rachel shows up and tells him that she wants to, wants to take his advice to come to Brooklyn. He makes her coffee, and they begin to talk. At con, and Jim Maxwell's head, Miss Quill, tells her she knows what she did to Rachel, and she informs her that she has detention as punishment, and Yale has put her acceptance on hold until she, until she completes satisfactory detention. After that meeting, Derek Blair tells the icon Dorota that she's going to work Rachel, and this time, she won't be caught. Ending the episode.